Hello everyone and welcome to this new video series about Autodesk Structural Bridge Design 2024. This is a software by the company Autodesk, the same company that made AutoCAD and Robot for you. And if you are new to this channel, this is going to be a new video series where we're going to be explaining everything about this software. But you still have to know that this is also somehow interconnected with the general theme of the channel, which is Civil Engineering Essentials. And at the moment, at the time of recording, we are having the Autodesk Robot series and the Bridge series and the Linear series. And in the Bridge series, last video, it, which is going to be linked top right, we talked about the necessity of using specialized software in the analysis of bridges. So this is one of the specialized softwares we're going to use. And today we are going to check the GUI and some parameters and general shape of the software before, before we start diving deeper into all the parameters of the software. Now, since we are talking about pre-stressed bridge design, I'm assuming that you have some general background about pre-stressed bridge design. If you don't, do not worry, because in the modeling analysis and design of bridge series, which I will be linking on the top right, there will be theoretical videos coming soon talking about uh, the theory and the checks and the code. Keep an eye on that video series. It's going to be expanded very soon. Without further ado, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. I'm assuming that you know how to install it uh, from the Autodesk page. Just Google Autodesk Structural Bridge Design and you can download it. If you have access to robot, be it educational license or I don't know, like a enterprise license, there is a high chance that you still have access to other structural bridge design. Once you have downloaded it, you can check out the recent files. I have nothing because it's a clean uh, installation and just click on new. When you click on new, you are greeted with this. Once again, this might take you back as being not robot-like and you're right. Now I am going to be using the Ashto LRFD and unfortunately, I am unable to be code neutral when it comes to bridges because bridges are nothing but code dependent. So here you can have different codes. I will be using the Ashto uh, American Association, Association for State Highways Transportation Officials and it's the Low Resistance Factor Design LRFD. This is the code I will be using. If you are a Eurocode fan, be my guest. So if you click on that, I'm going to create a new project because I want something comprehensive. If you click single design section, that's just a section check. And single design beam, that's just a beam check. So now I will just click on project and hit on OK. And once you click on OK, it loads for you the GUI of the Autodesk Structural Bridge Design. Now here you will notice that the GUI somehow is departing from the thing you are used in Autodesk Robot. You can see that this is kind of a menu based software meaning that I am now at the tab called materials. You can switch between tabs by clicking those tabs. It seems still that if you follow the tabs from top to bottom, you will be able to define a bridge and you will be able to analyze it because notice that the tabs are sorted in a logical manner. You start with materials, then you define your section, then you define your beams, you define your structure, your properties, your loads, and then you do compilations or cases and analysis. So it seems it follows a logical order. You will dive into the sub uh, components later. But I mean, for example, if you are in materials, you are greeted with this sub window. Right click here, add, and you can add your things. If you go to section design, you are greeted with this. It's empty because nothing is there. Right click here, add, and you can add a section. If you go to beam, you are greeted with nothing here. Right click here as per usual, you know the drill, add, and you can then add a beam. Structure definition, same thing. You can define a structure geometry. Structure properties, same thing. Everything, you can just right click, add, and add something. However, it doesn't make sense to add a section before adding materials. Because if you add a section without material, it will add it as a void material, which means an empty space. But that's something we will talk about later. You can see that there are some menus here. At the file, uh, you might want to check out the project overview. It shows to you what the things you have in the project. For now, nothing is there. And if you go to titles, you can even add your company. You can add your project name. This is what the header would look like. For example, project name, I don't know, demo. And you can ask here for, you can even put a sub, sub project title saying, for example, demonstration of auto the structural bridge design and here in job title i don't know like the sample bridge 
although we are not going to make a sample bridge today, job number, I don't know, like ASPD 552, calculation by recorder guy. It doesn't work. Okay, this is a meme. I think this is a meme moment for the uh, editor. I cannot add recorder guy, so I don't know, like, you can even add something here. I'll just leave it for now. This is what you will see in the reporting, and I'll just click on OK. So that's one of the settings you want to change in file um, titles. You want to change that. If you click on notes, you can add user notes. Those will come in the report if you select them. Data reports is something that doesn't make sense right now because we cannot generate anything without having done something. So this will be the last stage in our analysis. In the data, you can check out a structure type if you want to have a line beam or refine analysis. Of course, you want line beams here at the moment. Bridge type, it's a road bridge type. For now, there is no railway, it seems, so we are going to have a road bridge. Uh, if you want to define vehicles, you can define vehicles with specific axles. This is something you would do if you have a specific vehicle that you want to move on the bridge. However, we're going to use the Ash2 LRFD design trucks, so there is no need to do this. When is there a need to do this? There is a need to do this if your bridge wants to serve military uh, equipment. And sometimes there is a specification where you want your bridge to serve military equipment. Of course, here we are a civilian channel. We're not going to do any military stuff, so we are not going to define anything here. You should check out your military codes to know what the, I don't know, if there is like a standard tank, I am not surprised. You can even define a convoy if you want to have multiple vehicles behind each other. Once again, I think this is in the realm of military. In Calculate, you can do things, but of course, everything is now grayed out because you have defined nothing. In Options, you can switch the design code in case you messed it up. And even the Australian standard, you can see that there are two Australian standards, which is kind of cool. In Preferences, now notice there is nothing that you can help to be, there is nothing to be changed here. It's not like the Preferences in Autodesk Robot, it's just a simple one. Uh, template folders, how you want to appear it, if you want to have office style, this is an office style, you can change to native, which makes it look bland, I don't know, in graphics, the colors and so on. So the preferences are actually something you don't need to change. Edit units is something you can do. I am ob obviously using the SI units. Now, if you use the Ash2 code, you might be a fan of the American units or the customer units, so you can change to foot and inch. I will stay with meters, so you can basically change the units if you want. Uh, I will keep them SI units. And tolerances, this has something to do with the uh, results. I will leave the tolerances as be it. I think those are good. Torsion grid, this comes into play. I will show you this later. This comes into play when you calculate the C constant for a section. That's something you need to do. And I will show you later how you do this. In the company identity, you can see the stuff we have done before, but you can add new stuff. Like, for example, I don't know, CEE org or something, or I don't know, organization address like YouTube Avenue 553 or something. So you can add something to the header. I'm pretty sure you can change the background. Yeah, there we go. You can change the background color. That's something you can just, I don't want to change, save changes even. And here, finally, memory management. That's something very advanced. It's about uh, lower end computers. And if you want to change the amount of memory you are allowing for the software, you can change them. I just better leave them as is just to not change anything. So this is generally the GUI of the software in general. Now, I want to show you something very quick in materials, but I will have a separate video for it. In the materials, let me show you what happens if you right click and say add. There are some materials here. For example, if you go to pre-stressing steel, then you have a pre-stressing steel added and there is a tensile strength of it of FPU 1860. You might wonder why 1860 specifically. It is because the ASH2 code does define you some pre-stressing strengths, which is the 1860 megapascals, and it's a low relaxation uh, pre-stressing tendon. There will be some explanation about what we see here later, but uh, you can see that if you add a steel, then you immediately get the strength and in service and in ultimate, because you have some service limit states and you have some ultimate limit states and those limit states are a lot. You have service one, service two, ultimate one, ultimate two, fatigue and accidents and so on. There is a lot of things to cover, so we shall take it step by step. I, if you want to delete something you added, just right click and delete. Now you can at home, and that's something I want you to try, you can just go all out Banshee and just click OK here. You know, wing it, just go to section 
designed, add a design section, for example, a concrete beam section, you want to add a bulb T, or maybe an I section, like girder, and then you say OK. Now, notice that here it doesn't have a material, it's not filled, it's void, and I cannot change that. Why can't I change that? Because in the materials, I don't have a concrete, so I need to add a concrete now, and now I can go to the design section, and I can click here and change it from void to concrete, filling it with juicy concrete. If I say OK now, it asks me, do you want to create tendons for the concrete beam section? If you click on yes, then boom, there are the tendons. Those are the tendon locations. What about reinforcement locations? You cannot add anything because once again, you don't have reinforcements in the materials. So if you click on add reinforcing steel, the 420 megapascal, this is the typical steel. If you add it, then in the section, Suddenly you have reinforcement and you can right click here and just, just draw bars, you know, just click and draw some reinforcement bars. Of course, those reinforcement bars look goofy because they are big and they are misaligned, but let me just show you that you can as add whatever you want. And you can notice that if you click two bars near each other, uh, it doesn't work. It will automatically space it for you. Like, look, if you click very close to the bar, it will actually space it away. Why does it space away? First of all, that's cool because it abides by the code. There is a way to change those things. So uh, it's actually really easy to define bars. Don't think that you're going to define randomly. Like if you click here, you see they actually fill into the place very nicely. So this is a general idea of the Autodesk Structural Bridge Design. I will be going into the details very soon and we will see you in the next video. So before I finish, I want to give a I get a sized shout out to my dear channel members in the contributor level and the helper level whose names are going to be shown on the screen. I want to thank them from the bottom of my heart as the support of the channel is priceless to me and enables me to provide you with videos hopefully on time and with a certain quality I try to achieve and for that I am forever thankful. In the end I hope that you enjoyed the video and you found it beneficial. If you have enjoyed the video then please consider liking, sharing, subscribing, commenting and so on, especially subscribing because it helps increase the reach of my channel. As per usual, this is the Civil Engineering Essentials channel and we'll catch you in the next video. Bye bye.